Welcome, Misty Gnome. This video is a market update for January 16th, 2023. And in this video, we're going to talk about the Bitcoin and the crypto markets uh, as from I see it, because there's been a lot of interesting developments. Mostly, we had this huge green candle on the weekly chart on Bitcoin. And I see a lot of people are now getting overly bullish. So I just want to uh, calm you guys down that there will be probably a pullback. And from that pullback, uh, there is probably going to be a continuation of the bull market as well, at least for like a mini bull run. Uh, th there's potential for a mini bull run. I see some people are now calling for like $40,000 Bitcoin. So basically a double from here. Uh, it definitely could happen if history repeats. So I just want to showcase these possibilities and then uh, just expect in the short term uh, why a pullback is, is reasonable as well. And then uh, at the end of the video, I will talk about the uh, crypto markets because there's some interesting uh, narratives uh, going into 2023 that I just want to be part of as well. So anyway, let's get started with the video. So we had this uh, green huge candle here and it was quite large actually. It was like 22%, 23% uh, over just one week. And it was just a straight candle, not much pullbacks over the week until uh, where we are currently. So from just looking at the chart here, you can see that we were in this bear market here and then we got out of the bear market and now we've been sideways for a while, just like accumulation and then we had this blow off. And if we go over to the logarithmic ch uh, channel, uh, logarithmic view of the of the uh, of the market, you can see that we are still actually in the bear market zone in the logarithmic uh, view. So this is just one uh, resistance area, uh, I would say. Another resistance area that's coming from the S and P five hundred index is that on the S and P five hundred we are still inside the bear market here. So. Uh, and right now this is acting as a resistance. So I guess that's one of the reasons why Bitcoin is still uh, kind of still not 100% uh, in the bull zone yet. So if S&P 500 goes out of this, then I'm expecting uh, crazy things to happen in the market, it's just irrationality all over again. But right now S&P 500 is not there. So the, uh, the likely scenario is for a pullback to happen for the S&P 500. And maybe after that, we can uh, finally start getting out of the, uh, the, uh, the, the bear zone. But there's still the potential for a black swan event this year. Like I've showed in the previous videos that the inflation number that we got, it was 6.5%. Like I said, it was going to be lower than the previous one, just because how the inflation numbers are. You can watch that video if you like to see what exactly why I knew that the inflation was going to be lower. But overall, if we just take a look at the uh, the hard CPI numbers, you can see that if you go just compare the inflation month over month, you can see that we already had two consecutive uh, uh, months of uh, lower CPI number, which is means that we are just going to continue to see uh, lower and lower inflation numbers and that's gonna end by June. So the danger, danger here is that the government of United States or governments in other countries, uh, they actually overextend this, uh, this uh, in, in interest rate rise as well as the, 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 the damping down of inflation. Because we already at the end of last year, we saw uh, United kingdom having problems with their pension fund almost toppling over and that just got saved in just a few hours of time that it it, it got saved in so for these these reasons i think there's still a possibility for a black swan event so whatever you do i would definitely not overextend even if you want to speculate like okay we go to forty thousand, maybe have, we have a pullback here like dinome is saying uh, but just don't overextend, overextend at this moment in time because there's just so much uncertainty right now with the monetary policy. And until uh, we clearly have a pivot in the mon monetary policy, I would not be uh, going overly uh, too much in. But like I've said in the past, uh, the uh, risky assets actually usually, uh, how do I say, uh, they bottom out first. So I would not be surprised to actually see Bitcoin continuing to uh, decouple from the assets and then other assets finally catch up. And when we have the, the pullback on the 
from the from the market crash or if we have a market crash like that uh, uh, that would be a signal to basically go all in <laughs> But we don't have that one yet, so just have to be careful if you invest here. Because what we could see here is similar like we had here in 2019. Because if we actually take a look at, I found this quite interesting, is if we take a look at this green candle here, and we take a look at how many days do we have until next halving, it gives me 441 days. And that's basically exactly the same if we take a look at the previous Bitcoin halving date and we go back over to uh, the previous cycle here. The bottom was exactly here and then we have this mid bear market pump and after the bit mid bear market pump we had a few almost like a half year of just pumping on Bitcoin and the crypto markets and then we had the bear market again uh, continuation of the bear market and after the Bitcoin halving then we had this bull run. Uh, on, on the markets and the RSI <clears throat> on the Bitcoin chart also is showing that on 2018 we touched the below 30 number on the RSI we touched it again on 2020 and now we've been uh, below the 30 for quite a while as well on on the weekly chart uh, below 30 RSI so this is a another indicator that we might be bottoming out and setting up for like a mini bull run before the next Bitcoin halving if history were to uh, repeat itself. But just looking at the daily chart here, I just want to point out, yes, this is a clear pattern breaker uh, on the RSI. So this is kind of like a, um, a setting up for a new uh, phase of the cycle or a new phase in the market. But this RSI is just completely and overly uh, overextended. So that's another reason why I'm kind of uh, expecting a, uh, a pullback to happen. Another reason is if we go over to the four hour chart, what you can see here. Uh, I don't know why it's not updating. Let's see if it comes or not. Uh, I don't know why it's not working right now. But anyway, what you can see here is we had this pump here and then the RSI on the four hour uh, it was higher but when it made a new high the RSI was actually lower and the same was seen on the volume of Bitcoin as well I don't know why it's not updating maybe I lost my uh, internet connection but both the RSI and the volume was lower on the four hour chart so it's a divergence for a possible move to the downside another thing why I think just a short term we will see a downside is if we go over to GMX and this is something I learned from Chico Crypto what he showed in the video is uh, this is a derivative platform where you can long or short Bitcoin with leverage I personally don't use it but the statistics here are quite interesting what he explained is uh, that a lot of retail investors use this uh, tool but the whales are using bigger uh, bigger exchanges like Binance or BitMEX for shorting and longing so most investors here are retail investors and what you can see is how retail investors are what retail investors are doing and there's no manipulation in the numbers either because this is a decentralized platform so as you can see long positions are 115 million dollars while the short positions are $24 million. So there's almost $90 million difference between longs and shorts, which is another signal that the retail investors are overly in the long positions and how whales make money in the with, with the shorts and longs is by liquidating the retail investors. So retail investors have perhaps overreached and it's time to punish the retail investors. And that's how the whales make money in the market. And I saw other uh, indicators as well that the whales are not actually putting in more money at the moment at these prices. So that's another reason why I'm just expecting a pullback. And a complete shout out to Chico Crypto for actually showing this. I saw he was complaining to another YouTuber because uh, they also were talking about how Chico Crypto uh, uh, showed this. So he might complain about me, but whatever. Uh, I think it's a good indicator and it's a free one. So I, I think everybody's free to use. That's why I just gave out the shout out as well. And now just talking about the, the crypto markets, some narratives. There's one guy I found uh, is called Carl Zero X. 
And what he has is these monthly uh, alpha narratives that he compiles together. And this was quite interesting to me. I found something very, very nice, uh, very, very nice that I just wanted to share that I think this narrative goes will go on for the 2023 as well. So he's talking about liquid staking derivatives like FXS and that had, uh, had a very good pump. So that gives uh, Carl some legitimacy. I did not check his previous work, but when I saw uh, he was talking about the DCG holdings and basically these are uh, in a bearish mode because they will be sold by liquidating the Gemini holdings. So if you hold these, they will go down. But then the uh, interesting thing, there were some other interesting things here as well, like the, the Atom token that I really like. But the really interesting parts, I think, are CRV and AVE. And these are legacy DeFi protocols that you probably know about. They provide lending services as well as, uh, 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 well, CRV, they are a automated market maker as well. So <clears throat> what they are doing is they are issuing their own stable coins. So CRV will be launching CRV USD and AVE will be uh, issuing GHO or GO uh, stable coin. And these are quite interesting because the reason why I'm interested in the stable coins are not exactly if they are uh, great or actively used, but if you just remember what happened to UST and Luna, uh, mostly to Luna. So after they released the UST, Luna prices went over the moon. And that's basically why I'm interested in the CRV UST and Go. I did not look into the tokenomics of Go, but the CRV USD actually was quite, quite interesting. And uh, what it says here is uh, that this is a like a, a summary of the CRV USD. And you can read the whole thing. It's quite, uh, in, uh, how do I say? It's quite difficult to really, really understand how it will work in the real world. But basically you deposit Ethereum uh, as collateral and then you get CRV USD. Uh, uh, so it's basically a similar system how DAI is created. You give collateral and you ten take out the loan and the loan will be given in DAI and then you have a chance to actually get liquidated on that loan and you lose the capital. So it's a similar system here except it's a ongoing liquidation program where it will partly liquidate your assets uh, if the prices of Ethereum go down, if it goes up, then it will buy more Ethereum for you. So you have more potential for the upside, but your downside is limited. But then uh, you do get some protection against the downside with this system, but your, your upside is also bigger than on a traditional uh, 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 automated market maker system. And what some people are speculating that it may uh, even take place of Uniswap version 3 uh, stablecoin swaps in some way as well. And it's quite interesting what they're speculating here. And one interesting thing that I saw in this thread was that Curve Finance themselves on January 11 actually said that, whoa, interesting thoughts under this thread as well. I will link this in the description so you can learn what they are and how they work. But overall, both Curve and Ave, they have um, uh, about $4 billion worth of uh, total value locked in their protocols. And Curve, its market cap is about $500 million right now. So if the CRV USD is going to get released, uh, even though CRV already had like 80% uh, pump, it may still continue to go up. So if CRV is going to go down, on this next ne uh, next Bitcoin move that I'm expecting it to uh, have a pullback, uh, CRV might be something you may actually want to pick up, uh, just in case they have the uh, the CRV coming out. Because according to this, it's coming in January, and I was looking into uh, the social media and the uh, Telegram and the Discord channels of CRV our curve and I wasn't able to confirm if they will actually do it in January or not. So I don't know if it's coming or not, but just in case it happens, maybe a good idea to get some CRV. Uh, Go, I did not check it yet. So I need to do that uh, after the video as well. 
but CRV definitely interesting. Uh, and I think even though it may not be released in January, but if it's coming, I think it's a narrative that uh, will uh, bring a lot of value to CRV as well. So just wanted to highlight that uh, interesting thing here that I saw. Anyway, uh, I think pretty much everything I had already said in this video. Overall, the market, I think the bear market for Bitcoin, we may be very, very close to the bottom or we may already have bottomed out. There's still the potential for the uh, for the uh, black swan. But in the short term, I'm just expecting expecting a pullback and then a continuation. So like UNCX, I saw it coming down already a little bit. That may be an interesting thing. Bitcoin may be interesting. And even Ethereum starts to be interesting, in my opinion, because Ethereum will be the collateral that will be used in the CRV USD uh, situation, as well as when you start to have all these layer twos, uh, all of those will be built on top of Ethereum. And of course, there's the uh, the situation where all these big banks are invested in Ethereum. So Ethereum, it's going to be a hub in some sort uh, going forward anyway. So I think that's a, uh, a solid pick, even though there's the release schedule of Ethereum. Uh, so people who have staked Ethereum have a chance to actually sell the Ethereum once the Ethereum 2.0 uh, next updates are going to go live. So that's a little bit scary when, when people have a chance to sell their Ethereum, but overall Ethereum uh, in the bull run and it's not going to happen immediately. Uh, so Ethereum might have a, a good run as well uh, for, for, for this next cycle on the crypto markets as well. That's basically my update for the crypto markets as of today, uh, what I'm seeing in the markets. And I just wanted to highlight these things that I've been looking and seeing all over. So maybe you thought this video was useful. If you did, consider subscribing and liking the video, maybe leaving a comment down below if, if you have something uh, interesting to say or ask. But anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you liked it and I will see you on the next video.